the beloved Son of God our Father, the one who was once crucified but has now resurrected and ascended back into heaven. We're so glad to be with you all this morning on August 16, 2020, as we come to celebrate another day in the Lord down here at St. Peter's African Methodist Episcopal Church in Walterboro, South Carolina, right on the corner of Holy and Heavenly. We thank God for those of you who are on the teleconference call. We thank God for those of you who are watching us live on Facebook. As we come down to celebrate, not just to come in, sit down. We don't want you to be spectators, although you're not, we can't see you, but we know God can see you. So if you feel like praising him, we want you to join in right where you are. Because we are celebrating today, amen, and every day that the Lord has given us to be alive. You know, I remember in the old church, and they used to say, they used to say that I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. And if your mind has stayed on Jesus, guess what? You can't have nothing but a good day. No matter how many challenges may come your way, the Lord has already overcome them for you. So we come this morning to celebrate Jesus Christ and him crucified and resurrected and ascended. And we thank God today. We ask you to keep uh, all that everyone in prayer today we are going through. And as we continue to go through this, uh, this global pandemic, we know that God is still in control. As the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. So uh, this morning, Brother Green is going to lead us in our uh, hymn of praise, and then we'll come back and have a prayer, and also the scripture lesson for today. So we ask you to join me, and as Brother Green lead us now in our hymn of prayer. Amen. We come. 
come near God with shouts of acclamation pouring from our lips because God, we praise you and we glorify you just for being God. We realize that if it had not been for you on our side, then God, we know that we would have been cut off and go where travelers go and never to return. We thank you, Heavenly Father, to know that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. He came so that he and died so that we may have a right to the tree of life. He came, suffered, and, and, and died for our sins, uh, though he committed no sin. He came, dear Lord God, so that we may be able to one day, if we do right and live right, that one day we will be in his presence in heaven. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your ultimate sacrifice. We thank you for the vicarious death that you did for us on the cross at Calvary. We thank you, dear Lord, that even while you were being beaten and, 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 and treated the way you were treated, you never opened your mouth to say a, a mumbling word except, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We thank you today in, the, in your precious name, Jesus, because we realize, dear Lord, that that one day we all will have to stand before you and give an account of our ministry, give an account of our works of salvation, give an account of all those things that the sins that we committed and the one we omitted. We thank you, God, for the things that we that we realize how great thou art. And we pray today your many blessings to continue to fall upon this world right now. God. Blessing us, dear God, and keeping us, and we know we shall be blessed and kept. Uh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, to know uh, that your Son, Jesus Christ, uh, you gave up your only begotten Son and asked us uh, that all we have to do is give our lives and our will to you in return. Uh, so, God, we pray your blessings upon everyone uh, that, that's hearing what I'm saying today, God. Uh, we know that nothing can separate us from your love, God. Uh, we know that, that there's a principality and wickedness in high places, dear God, but we know that we have the power to pull them down uh, if we lean and depend on you, God. Uh, trusting in you with all our heart and leading not to our own understanding, acknowledging you in everything that we say and do, and you promise to direct our path. Uh, thank you, dear God, for this day. Thank you for keeping us, and we pray that the grace that Jesus Christ has poured out upon us. Dear God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to do more for us than we can ever ask or think. And God, we know when that time comes, when we won't be able, dear God, to gather at St. Peter's or wherever anyone is gathering, when that time will come, dear Lord, when we will have to give up what we have here on earth, because death will come and destroy us all one night or one day. So God, we pray that that when that happens, that you find us, uh, that our soul will be right with you, uh, and that we will hear you say, enter into the, into the grace of our Lord, your Father, uh, the kingdom which will prepare for you before the foundation of the world. Lord, we thank you today. Uh, we praise you and we glorify you on this day. Bless every pastor that's preaching and teaching uh, a word from God. Uh, bless every church, every member in the church uh, that are believers, dear God, that true believers are, uh, and know what is happening, dear God, uh, in this country have to be torn down, uh, and God, and be rebuilt uh, the right way. Uh, and we thank you, dear God, for opening our eyes and removing the scale and, and having us to see all of the idiocies that are going on that are not correct. God, we thank you today for these blessings, and we give you all the praise and the glory, and we thank you for the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this temple, and you can have your own way with us, and we thank you. We thank you, Father, and we give you all the praise and the glory, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for these blessings. Amen. Amen.
Nehemiah, the ninth chapter and beginning at the 16th verse, and I will end at the 21st verse. Nehemiah 9, verses 16 through 21, and according to the New American Standard Version of the Bible, it reads like this, but they, our fathers acted arrogantly. They became stubborn and would not listen to your commandments. They refused to listen and did not remember your wondrous deeds which you had performed among them. So they became stubborn and appointed a leader to return to, return to their slavery in Egypt. But you are, you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness, and you did not forsake them. Even when they made for themselves a calf of molten metal and said, this is your God who brought you up from Egypt and committed great blasphemies, you in your great compassion did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud did not lead them by day to guide them on their way, nor the pillar of fire by night to light for them the way in which they were to go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them. Your manner you did not withhold from their mouth, and you gave them water for their thirst. Indeed, 40 years you provided for them in the wilderness, and they were not in want. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet swell. The word of God for the people of God. We'll have now a, a uh, selection from Brother Green. The soul was all by himself today, amen. Have you got good religion? Facebook live and teleconference 
or members or ask for $153 or what you can donate. Our birthdays from this past week. August 9th was Brother Dwayne Buckner. August 13th was our own Reverend Michael Allen Wright. Our associate minister, minister, I should say. August 14th was my niece, Jaden Bonison. Unfortunately, she was unable to be with us this summer due to a pandemic. Also, August 14th was Sister Frances Witherton. And tomorrow on August 17th, we will have Brother, Brother Dave Zell Sr. who will celebrate his birthday. Amen. Thank you and everyone have a great day. Praise the Lord, amen. We thank God for everyone who's celebrating their birthday. Reverend Wright, praise the Lord, amen. Getting on out there too, huh? Yes, Lord. <laughs> Every year brings a, a, an additional number to it, but that's all right. They say uh, age, age ain't nothing but a number, but I, I, yeah. I, I don't think that's... <laughs> I'll begin the question now. <laughs> you, ask, you ask some people, they'll tell you, well, it's more than just a number. <laughs> but, but we thank God for those who are celebrating their birthday. It's just good to be alive and to be able uh, to enjoy your birthday, amen, another year. So we give God all the praise to all of the birthday uh, celebrants for this uh, past week. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you. And, and uh, yes, um, what we want to do is to continue to keep the church informed. Uh, we are hoping that we won't have a long meeting tomorrow evening. But as Sister Sonia said, it is on the plans of reopening. We have already begun. Uh, part of that process and the boxing and packaging of everything. So if any of you were to come by the church now, you would see that there is nothing in the church, in the sanctuary, I should say, um, that is uh, that could be a possible carrier. So uh, prepare yourself. But we will talk about that tomorrow night. What I want to do is um, also mention about the importance of this election. Uh, this election is, is, is very, very important. And if you don't like what you see happening in this country today, then you need to go to the polls and vote. You just can't sit around and talk about it. And what we need to do, we can see how the manipulation of the Postal Service is already at work now. I, I'm not. I don't want to waste my time, uh, God's wonderful time, talking about the person. But what I'm saying is that when you uh, to, so so when you can just blatantly do whatever you want to do, and and the people who are there to govern won't govern, then maybe they need to do a sweeping clean and get all of them out of Congress and the Senate and in the White House, and let's start all over. Actually, the country needs to be rebuilt all over because the foundation that they have Blake, uh, said it was built on has been nothing but a foundation of hypocritical uh, uh, hypocrisy and all that stuff. So we, so we want to pray uh, for, for those of you. If you can't make it and if you're too afraid to go, then we need you to get your ballot, put in your request, for the mail-in ballot right now. Call down to your, your election uh, station uh, 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 headquarters and let them know you want to, that you want to vote by mail so that they can get it in. And you have to get it in as soon as possible. Don't get it and hold on to it. The second thing that we want to talk about, the presiding elder Anderson for the Buford District gave us some numbers uh, in, in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in an email concerning the census and from Buford, Jasper, Colleton, Hampton County. Uh, we are reporting, Colleton County right now is reporting 
at 51% participation in the census. We need to, if you know someone in Carleton County, please just call them and ask them about, have, have, you, have you did your census? You can even do that online or by mail. Just do it, do not, do not sit around because if you don't do it, then you can't complain and protest about what Carleton County doesn't have because if you don't get in there and get counted, then the money and distribution of the funds will not come to Carleton County. And so we need everybody. If you know someone, call them. If you, are, if you haven't done your census, you do yours first. And then you call them and say, hey, guess what I'm doing? I'm doing my census. And, let, and get it done because if you don't, you won't be able to complain. They won't be able to get the, the funds in the county for the things that, in the, for the type of assistance that we need in the county. We need you to please, ma'am, please, sir, everyone that's eligible, get out and vote and get out and, do, and get your census done as soon as possible. This election is too important for us to sit back and just wait to see what's going to happen. As it said, faith without works is dead. And part of your work is as a civic duty to be to participate in the political process and to also be counted so that you will be able to, uh, to to hopefully get some of the things that are needed. Even God took the senses of the people uh, in the Old Testament. So don't come and let nobody tell you, oh, senses ain't that important. If God had had it to be done in the Old Testament, go and read the book of Numbers and you will read all about it. Amen. So we thank you all to, again. Uh, we give God all the praise and glory uh, for you all. And uh, we will be uh, having the recording of the pastor's uh, annual conference uh, report will take place here. The ministry part will take place here um, next, beginning today at 2, we, and then will take place um, next week uh, on Saturday between 9 uh, and 9. We hope to be done by 12. And so it's not going to be if we got two minutes, one or two minutes to give our ministry report. And I've been practicing on the way coming in, and I got through and with a minute and 52 seconds. Too long. And so, so we want to make sure that we get it in and, uh, and get it all done. And so we want to thank you, St. Peter's. Again, as I said before, Sean and I thank you all for allowing us to serve. And, and the annual conference is going to take place on, uh, at, well, the missionary service will begin on that Thursday of in September. And then that Friday and closing out on that Saturday. And on that Sunday morning, uh, Sean and I plan to be back here at St. Peter's. Amen. That's our plan and everything. But um, it's going to be virtual. And so uh, we just want you to know it's only going to be three days. So everything is going to take place virtually and all that. So, But I want to thank you all, St. Peter's, publicly to the members of the church for all the wonderful ministries. We talked about some of them doing um, our church school this morning, but I want to thank you all for what you have done. Even through this crisis situation, uh, you were still on point. And so we thank God that we had a wonderful 2019, 2020 conference year, and we have already begun the 2020, 2021 conference year on the 1st of August. So as we continue to go through, thank you that we were able to make the assessment for, um, for August on the 15th, and we thank God for you and your contributions. Here's the thing. We got the church anniversary coming up on uh, next Sunday, as Sister Sonia said. Uh, we are uh, excited about our guest preacher that will be here. We are retired AME pastor. And we are also grateful for uh, the contributions that you all are going to make towards the church anniversary. Remember, in October, our um, our community oyster rolls will not be able. We will not be able to have that. So we need to do the very best that we can for the church anniversary, and then we'll do whatever we can do 
uh, in October as we prepare moving forward. God bless you. We are so great to be with you all, uh, to have been here with you all. Actually, it's 10 and a half years for Sean and I, and, and uh, we're just grateful uh, for the years that we've been here. And uh, let me be honest and say, no, it had always been easy. But the good thing about it is that we always say, let us disagree in the boardroom, but we are on point when we come in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We love you. We'll be looking for many, many more years right here at St. Peter's. Because God ain't done with us uh, yet. You know, we got some more that God wants us to do here. And so today I am blessed. Um, to have uh, our associate, the Reverend Michael Allen Wright. Uh, we thank God for him. They had his virtual graduation on last uh, last uh, last Saturday. Um, they he graduated with his uh, uh, Bachelor of Art in Liberal Studies, and now he's even thinking about working on the Masters. And so. I tell them, I said, once that educational bug bites you, it's hard to stop. Uh, but it's, uh, but I tell them to let God continue to lead you to matriculate as far as he would uh, want to carry you. So we thank God for him. So we want uh, Reverend Michael, usually third Sundays are our youth Sundays, and we want him to just come and bring a word for us, and we thank God for him, and uh, we know that he has studied and prepared himself. And so we ask you to pray much for him because no matter how much we prepare ourselves, we got to make sure that God and the, and the Holy Spirit is in the midst of all this. And so after the singing of our sermonic selection by Brother Green, the next voice you hear will be none other than the Reverend Michael Allen Wright. Amen. Amen. God bless him. And God, and, and, and I pray that your ears are open to hear what thus says the Lord through the Bible. Amen. Somebody pray for me.
Father, now I just ask you to come on down from on high and touch this lowly vessel as I stand behind this sacred and consecrated holy desk, Father. I cannot do nothing without you. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be simple in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all God's children say amen. 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 Like Raven said, this is usually our youth Sunday. Well, I got news for you. I hope there are some children listening out there, near and far, because this message is strictly for you. You have your weapons in the Old Testament reading from the in Psalms, the 20th chapter, first to the ninth verses. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. In the times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from this holy heaven and rescue him with his great power. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Give glory to our king, O Lord, and to our cry for help. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. And if I can use for a topic, just simply, God did. This song is a prayer for the kings of Israel, for a relation to Christ. Even the greatest of men and women may be much in trouble. Neither the crown on the king or the queen's head, nor the grace in his or her heart will make him or her free from trouble. Even the greatest of men and women must much be much in prayer. Let none expect benefit by the prayers of the church or their friends, who are capable of praying for themselves yet neglected. Pray that God will protect this person and preserve their life. That God will enable him and her to go on his and her undertakings for the public good. We may know that God accepts our spiritual sacrifices. If by his spirit, he kills in our souls a holy fire of piety and love to him. Also that the Lord will crown his enterprises with success. Our first step to victory in spiritual warfare is to trust only in the mercy and grace of God. All who trust in themselves will soon be cast down. Believers triumph in God and his revelation of himself to them, by which they distinguish themselves from those that live without God in the world. Those who make God and his name their praise may make God and his name their trust. This was the case when the praise and power of Jewish unbelief and pagan idolatry fell before the sermons and the lives of the humble believers in Jesus. This is the case in every conflict with our spiritual enemies when we engage them in the name, the spirit, and the power of Christ. And this will be the case at the last day when the world with the prince of it shall be brought down and fall. But believers, risen from the dead, through the resurrection of the Lord, shall stand and sing praises in heaven. In Christ's salvation, let us rejoice and set up our banners in the name of the Lord our God, assured that by the saving strength of his right hand, we shall be conquerors over every enemy. That is the case in this text with the people of Israel asking for prayer for their king, whom at that time was David. David, who was in the lineage of Jesus. David, whom God said was a man after his own heart. David, who slayed a titan known as Goliath. David, who was known as the great hero of Jerusalem. However, with all these accolades, accomplishments, achievements, and even being highly favored by God, People still wanted to ask for God's protection for their king, who maybe was about to go into battle. Even the greatest men and women still need help from God. You see the loving hearts that these people had for their king, but more importantly, the love and trust they had for God. 
God. They knew that he could do. He knew what he could do. They knew how wise he was. They knew he had the power to change any situation where his will was absolute. They had that faith that God would help David prevail, and he did. God blessed David victory after victory. He blessed him with riches beyond riches because David was God's choice to be king of Israel. God chooses who he wants and needs to succeed. Mm -hmm. Children, God chose you to succeed in school. He gave you the tools you needed to make good grades and pass your classes. Mm -hmm. I was just like David. You had a strong support system. Your family, your friends, and even your church family. Easy to pray for your success. When we were all, when we are all on one accord, God works. He works on you and in you. He works on you if you're struggling, and He works in you when you're excelling. Do not be ashamed if you struggle. Not everyone can navigate through school so easily. Some of us need more assistance than others, but that does not make you a lost cause. That's right. It simply makes you a caterpillar striving to transform into a butterfly. I remember the struggles I had to face throughout my time in school. Oh, yeah. From third grade to high school, math was my worst subject. I had issues in writing, and science was excruciating. I failed a formal age exam twice. I had to take remedial courses to pass. I was in tech prep classes in high school, not college prep classes. I was labeled an LD, learning disability, but they had another term for it in the school system, a logo dumb. Mm. Because I was born with ADD, attention deficit disorder. I could not concentrate in class. I was scared to raise my hand on any question due to embarrassment. People laughed at me because of how I dressed. Yes, I was bullied because of it. I was called names like four hours because of my glasses. That fear and frustration followed me even to high school where I was still struggling. Mm. One day on my way to the office to drop off some things at the attendance office, I overheard my guidance counselor, Miss Martin, speaking to another guidance counselor about me because I heard my name. Rule number one. Never have your door wide open so anybody or everybody can eavesdrop or listen to your conversation, go ahead, especially man. about someone. Go ahead, go ahead. Martin said, I don't know what to do with this one, or oh, I'm a number now instead of a name. I believe he'll never make it with his grave, for I know the two places where he'll end up, mm. prison or the grave. Look at God. She had already done me a lost cause before giving me a chance. Look at God. Those words can someone when they're supposed to be helping. I went to my mother in tears about what I heard. My late mother, Leatrice Jean George Wright, told me, son, opinions are like buttholes. Everyone has one. <laughs> I don't know. She don't know you like I know you. She didn't raise you. I did. She don't control you. I do. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to help you, but some of them feel like they are gone. You are beyond help. And so they get up and let you fall. Mm -hmm. But the one thing they don't know or don't want to know is that you have help in very high places. You have someone you can call upon, and when you speak, he listens. When you're sad, he's there to make them glad. If you're in a fight, he's there with his mind. You are never alone when he's watching you from his throne. Son, when idiots tell you one thing, God says another. Right. So don't get worked up over foolishness and foolish people. I know what you can and can't do, and so does he. Don't they don't determine your destiny? He does. Ask God to help you, and he will save you the angels and the aid. However, he's humbling me right now for going to that school and whooping a little Caucasian butt because you're my son, and no one hurts my boy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like David with all the accomplishments, but I strive to be like him with God's help. And with God's help, I did it. On June 6, 1998, at 9 o'clock a.m., on the old side of the old Walter High School Bulldog Stadium, I, along with Sister Sonia Bobson and 27 others, marched and graduated with our diplomas. My goddess just handed me my diploma and told me, Michael, I don't know how you did it. Mm -hmm. I told her, I had help from a powerful source. For well, my God is awesome, and he did it. Miss Riddell Fields was behind me and shouted, Amen. Well done, Michael. I knew you could do it. I didn't stop their children. God told me to keep going and go beyond this diploma. When he speaks, I listen. Never thought I would be called 
material. But he did it again. Two one delegate diploma from Denmark Technical College. A certificate of theology from ITC. Not one, but two associates from USC saw. And now a Bachelor of Arts from the University of South Carolina. Mm. This caterpillar became a butterfly because God did it. That's right. That's God right. saw my trade and turned it into my triumph. Children, put God first in your life and watch him do it for each and every one of you. There's no such thing as being too young to talk to God. Do it, do me a favor to ask him what you need. If you need help, ask him. If you want to pass, ask him. If you want to fight your enemies, ask him. He's here with you and for you. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Bless the prophet you and not harm me. Bless to give you hope in a future. He's here to give you hope in a future. He has a plan for your life, and his plans guarantee victory. I don't know about you, church, but I know it's time to encourage our children because there are people out there who want to see them fail and fall. We are the strength. We are the help. We are the comfort. And we are the support. Why? Because someone strengthened you. Someone helped you. Someone comforted you. Someone supported you. And believe it or not, someone saved you. We are still here because God did it. For you. And now, we need God's help. We have to do it for them. God did it for David because of the support team. Now, we have to be the support team for them so he can do it for them. I'm so glad. So glad. So very glad that God took a struggling, bully, ridicule, nobody like me, and transformed me into a strong, loving, caring, humble, and educated somebody for his good.
Because without the parents he had, he could have fallen by the wayside. But like his mother said, don't let what people think of you become your reality. Amen. So if there's one person out there today, you, you've been struggling and you've been trying to fix yourself. Young person all in the day. You've been trying to fix yourself and you've been trying to fix your child. The best thing you can do for your child or yourself is come to Jesus. So I offer you right now Jesus Christ who is the rescuer and redeemer of our soul. In, all, in, in order to get here, you have to believe what it says in Romans 10, 9 through 13. That if you confess, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you shall be saved. So I want you out there in Facebook land or in the teleconference, if you feel that need, please, I ask you to just pray this prayer with me. Gracious God, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is your son. And I thank you for sending, giving up your only begotten son to come and suffer a sinful death so that I may have a right to the tree of life. Even though he committed no sin, yet though he bore the sin of the world on his shoulders. The ransom that you paid just for somebody like me and Reverend Michael and all those who have given their lives. So I confess this with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your son. Incarnate, crucified, Buried, raised from the grave, and now has ascended back in heaven. I confess this with my mouth today, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you can reach out so that we may be able to help you at 843-810-1731. And we also want to pray today for those who are going through a whole lot of struggles in life, as even some of those that Reverend Michael spoke about, we thank God for his unwavering, for his, his compassion upon us, his mercy and his grace. God, we thank you. And we pray for family members who are suffering and going through sickness right now. We lift them up to you, dear God, and we, we, and those members of this church whose loved one may be in the hospital, may be at home, may be somewhere in the nursing, anywhere, dear God, we ask you to just, we know that your presence is already there with them. We just ask you, dear God, to hear our plea as we intercede on that sick person's behalf. We give you all the praise and the glory and thanking you right now for your healing in their bodies. We don't know how you're going to do it or when you're going to do it, but we just trust that you will do it, dear God. We know that you are the great physician who's able to do exceeding and abundantly more than we can ask. And God, we just pray now that you will just go and just heal their body, dear God, and, and then raise them up off the bed of affliction and, and turn them around, dear God, those who are lost and don't know you for the free part of their sin. We pray that you will turn them around before us a day and a day too late. We thank you, dear God, as you look upon the leadership in this country and around the world, those who do not know you, dear God. We pray that they will hear a word one day and, and turn around from the madness that has, that has encapsulated their minds, God, and realize that there is only one God and the God we serve is the God of the heaven and the earth, the creator of the universe and the giver and sustainer of life. So God, we pray 
We pray for every church, dear God. We pray, we pray, for, we pray for deliverance. We pray, dear God, for healing and protection from this coronavirus. We put it all in your hands this day. And we thank you for loving and caring for us so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer in faith and with thanksgiving. And we thank you for the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Just before we close, we want to just say thank you, Reverend Michael, for a powerful word. A powerful word. Not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it is unto salvation and you are not ashamed. So we thank you, we praise and we glorify God for you. Keep learning. And when you keep learning, you keep teaching and preaching. Amen. We're going to ask you to come down and do the benediction as we prepare to leave this place in the name of Jesus Christ.